What's good, people? What is good? What's good? How's everyone doing? Um, hopefully, you know what I'm going to say next. Hopefully, you're all doing it very, very, very well. Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm about to go to the gym um, first. Coffee. Second, record the video. Third, upload it. Fourth, gym. Fifth, come back, eat. You know, I don't actually eat before the gym. So I actually go to the gym, empty stomach. This is basically all I take before the gym. Just this, just this. Um, yeah. And then, so my first meal of the day, this is most days actually, is around 2.30. 2.30 is my first meal of the day. And it's not like no intimate fasting shit. It's just how it works for me. Like I get up. I actually prefer to do gym on an empty stomach unless, let me not lie now, unless it's a real heavy day. So if I'm doing like really heavy deadlifts and real heavy squats, then I might try and get a meal in. I might try and do like, um, I don't know, some oats, bananas and berries or something. But most times, if it's just like an all round body session, this, some water, wing, to the gym. All right, um, I've got some good news to share with you guys. Um, but I can't share it yet. I'll share it next week. But it is, um, it's good news. It's good news. And it's, um, it's crazy. It's crazy. But um, yeah. I want to share it now. Just because I am like that kid that opens up the Christmas presents the day before Christmas without my mum knowing. And then Sela tapes it back while she's sleeping. <laughs> That's me. I'm, I'm very impatient. But I can't tell you now because I might get in trouble. So um, I don't want to get in trouble. So I will share it next week. As soon as it's 110% signed on the dotted line, as they say, I will let you guys know. And no doubt you will all be happy for me. Why have I got this case here? No doubt you'll all be very happy for me. All right, let's um, let's talk boxing, eh? Boxing channel and all that good stuff. Um, it looks like we're close to Terence Crawford versus Kell Brook, right? It's saying that a deal is pretty much done um, and that Kell will get around two million, which makes me feel like Terence is gonna get, I feel like it's gonna be something like a 75-25 split, put it that way. So Terence is gonna get some decent dough. Um, I think there still is discussions as to where this fight takes place. Remember, I did say about a month ago that if Terence fights Kel over here, it's pay-per-view. I think we can all know. I think it is. It is. Um, pound for pound, number two, number three, three weight world champion is coming over to the UK to fight Kel Brook. It's pay-per-view. Um, I don't think it's that in the States. So I think there is discussions as to where or not, where, sorry, this fight takes place. Um, so that's probably why nothing sort of set in stone as yet. Um, but I do think this fight is going to happen next for either man, right? I think Kel's going to fight Crawford next. I think Crawford's next fight is Kel. So I think this fight will happen um, again around November-ish. Again, nothing set in stone. I do think we're waiting to see. Remember, there are... Um, fans slowly but surely coming back to some UK venues, um, sporting venues now. It hasn't happened in boxing yet, which is surprising, but in other sports it's happened. Um, in football it's happened. There's been test events. So Brighton played, I think Brighton played Chelsea uh, in a pre-season friendly and I think 3,000 fans were allowed. Again, test event. If that goes well, more fans can come in. Um, yesterday, Harlequins played Bath at Rugby. Don't ask how I know this, but I do know. And 3,500 fans came to the stoop for Harlequins play. So there are fans coming back slowly but surely. So you think of that, and what are we, September 5th, September 6th now? November, there could be 10, 15,000 fans allowed. If that happens over here first, then Crawford versus Brooke is here. Fact, it's going to happen here. So you're talking about a gate receipt and you're talking pay-per-view. It's going to happen over here. Do I like the fight? Um, it's difficult. I'm trying to remove my favoritism for Kelbrook. I've been a massive Kelbrook fan for 
years since he won the British title. So um, I'm going to try and remove that and say and, and be very brutal, honest, realistic. Kel's not fought a 147 fight. I don't know when. I actually don't know. Let me have a look. When was the last time Kel Brook fought 147? How many years are we talking? I'm going to just guess and say four. It might be more than that. Sorry, it can't be more than that. Surely not. Um, so Kel's last fight. Oh, yes, yeah, so, okay, Errol Spence. May 2017. So we're talking three and a half years, possibly. And it's not like it's been an active three and a half years. He's, he's had three fights in that period. So, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Can Kel make 147 healthy? It's not like Kel walks around like Chris Eubank Jr. Do you know what I mean? Chris Eubank Jr. looks like he doesn't weigh above 170. Honestly, he just looks like... as fit. If Kel was that, then I'd say, you know what? Even though he's not made 147 for a long time, he always looks in shape. Like, I've never seen ever, ever Chris Eubank Jr. with anything looking like a bit of a gut. Never. Always in tip-top shape. If Kel was that guy, then I'd say, yeah, you know what? Even though he's not had a fight at 147 for three years, he'll make it. He'll make it. But he's not that guy. He's not that guy. So he's starting from a place of... Don't want to guess. I actually don't want to guess. 185? <laughs> don't want to guess. And it's not. So that's where he's starting from. I'm guessing he's not that now just because he's, he's known about these talks, right? So I'm guessing he's, he's a bit lower than that. But he's starting from a very, very high place. So I don't think Kel's shot worn. I just think he has a weight problem. So there's a difference. When Amir Khan fought Terence, we're going to talk about Amir Khan actually, but when Amir Khan took, um, fought Terence Crawford, I know Amir Khan's shot worn. And so it was, it, that, that was it. I was like, oh, the first couple of punches... You know, as soon as, basically, Amir, Amir's got this thing, hasn't he, where, you know, as soon as someone lands, it could be done. I don't think, Kel's definitely not that. If any of you are saying Kel's that, then I'm sorry, you're wrong. He's not that. Um, my problem with Kel is inactivity and a weight problem. That's it. Because as a boxer, as a skillful boxer, he, Kel's very, very, Kel's legit. Kel's legit. It's just, there's a weight issue. So, and you know my phrase, he will look like a Ferrari. It will, at the scales at 147, he's going to look ridiculous. But will it be a Ferrari, no engine? Will it be? And if it is, then Terence is just going to go through the gears and it could get embarrassing. Um, so, yeah, all comes down to that. All comes down to weight management. If Kel, I'm sure they've done, <clears throat> I'm sure they've done like a little test cut. In between, obviously you're not going to go all the way to 147, but I'm sure they've they've gone quite low recently just to see how he feels, right? They've done all the blood work, they've done everything just to make sure, okay, you, you're okay. That's what a lot of fighters do. And then, you know, okay, you can go to 147. You know, we can push your body that way. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I like the fight. I do. I have to admit, people, I do like the fight. But again, I'm liking the fight from a standpoint of Kel that maybe came in the ring against GGG and killed that early rounds against Errol Spence. That's what I like. So I don't know. I don't know. I do pray the fight's over here. That'd be really good. But um, we'll see. We'll see. All comes down to pounds and pence. Um, but yeah, that fight looks like it's done for November. The reason I mentioned Amir Khan there, because Amir Khan done an interview with, I think it was Fight Hub, and Amir Khan said the reason he joined Matram was to fight Kelbrook. That part could be true because it was a shock that he joined Matchroom. I was very, very much like, what? So that part could be true. Um, but then he almost alluded to the fact like, or he almost made it sound like Kel was scared of him and that he joined Matchroom, then Kel jumped to 154 and Kel didn't want the fight and blah, blah. Stop lying. Stop. You're a grown man. You're like, stop. Right, it just annoys me. Like this Kel Amir thing, I'd forgotten about it. I, I, I parked it to the side. I was like, you know what, oh, it's whatever. Like I, I, it was removed from my brain. And then Amir had done that. 
And I'm like, you're lying. You're just, you're just lying. Everyone knows you've ducked Kell Brook. Fact. You've ducked Kell Brook. Like, if anyone doesn't believe that, then I'm sorry. You've, you've got your Amir Khan hat on, right? You've got your Amir Khan. Ring Raps, the guy that um, I film this with, so when I take the chair on tour, the, the cameraman, and not more than that, actually, the cameraman slash interviewer, he thinks I'm too soft on Amir, so he'll like this. <laughs> I'm not soft on Amir. I just respect what Amir's done throughout his career. But this Kell Brook scenario, I'm sorry, there's only one person that didn't want to make this fight happen. Only one. And it's clear as day that first person is Amir Khan. Clear. Like, like the only way I'd believe that Kell ducked Amir, I need to see proof. Like, I need to see emails. I need to see a trail of proof because Kell wanted to smash Amir. So, I'm not having that crap, man, about you joined Matram and Kell decided to then go to 154. Kell would have gone to 140. <laughs> no joke. Kell would have gone to 140 to fight Amir. He would have been a, definitely a Ferrari no engine then, but he would have done it. Kell didn't want to fight Amir. What nonsense. What absolute nonsense. All right, where are we? Um, Isaac Chamberlain fought yesterday, right? Channel 5 um, put on their show. Good win for Isaac Chamberlain. That show looked all right, didn't it? But not credit to Mick Hennessy in that blood. Like, credit to him just to keep on plugging away and going. Like, all of these top fighters leave. Everyone goes. Think of, think of the fighters he's had. I mean, obviously, you would always think of Tyson Fury, right? Um, remember, when Tyson Fury won that world title, Vladimir Klitschko, it was Mick Hennessy. Frank was there as well. It was Mick Hennessy, you know? He got Huey Fury a world title shot at home, at home in Manchester against Joseph Parker. Carl Froch into the, what was it called back then, Super Six. Is that James the Girl? Is that Chris Eubank Jr.? They all go, but he still keeps plugging away. He still keeps plugging away. And um, yesterday he put on a semi-decent card. Um, yeah, so I've just got looking at the card now. Um, Isaac Chamberlain beat Matt Sen. That was Isaac Chamberlain's first fight. Oh, no, actually, he had a fight against Anti Woolery. I was going to say that's his first fight in a while, but he had a fight against Anti Woolery in August. Um, but by the way, how good physically did Isaac Chamberlain look? I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for fighters looking like you're in the greatest shape you can because ability is one thing, right? Ability, I sometimes feel like... <clears throat> You can add to it, but you've either got it or you haven't sometimes. I, I, I genuinely believe that. I mean, like you look at someone like Chris Eubank Jr., for example, in fantastic shape, ability-wise, and he's been boxing for so many years. He's made improvements, but he still isn't great. Let's be honest. So ability is one thing, but come in the best shape of your life. Like tick that box, right? Just tick that box and I'll be happy. And Isaac Chamberlain came in the best shape I've ever seen him. I still think... He's somehow undersized for cruiserweight. He is. Just because of cruiserweights like Lawrence Okoli, who's basically a heavyweight masquerading, right? Uh, or walking around. So he kind of looks undersized because guys are just so big out there. But um, he came in good shape. I love, um, look, Matt Sen's no one really, five and two record. But I love the finish. He was almost taking his time. Matt Sen was putting the pressure on, on the ropes, trying to land some good shots. And Isaac Chamberlain just soaking him up. And then, boom, left hook beautiful left hook and then turns Matt Sen around and then stops up, starts unloading and then lands some vicious uppercuts. It's, it's a very good finish and I'm happy for him. Um, the cruiserweight division in this country is very, very thick. So he'll get some fights. He'll get some fights. I don't know how far away he is from the likes of a React Poor, for example, probably too far away right now. Um, obviously a Coley rematch, that's not going to happen. But there are some good fights out there for him in the cruiserweight division. And even if not here, European. So um, good win for him. What I was laughing about to myself is that Mick Hennessy's son lost, uh, I think, a decision. Um, did he lose? I'm pretty sure he lost, right? A decision on his card. <laughs> Gee, that's when you don't like your son, boy. You can never accuse Mick Hennessy of um, being corrupt or having corrupt judges if his son lost. 
I'm sure he lost. Let's confirm that very quickly. I'm sure he lost to uh, Jamie Stewart. He did, yes. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Um, what about this kid? Um, Idris Virgo. I guess whatever he's doing kind of works because I'm talking about him now and that's probably what he wanted. I don't know if you guys saw it. He probably did because it was going around everywhere where he threw water, um, very similar to Chisora. He threw water um, at his opponent, Scott Williams. It was a last minute replacement as well. I think the thing that everyone's laughing about is that Scott Williams is 0-7, right? Um, yeah. So, I don't know. But it, it, it worked in a weird way, right? Because no one would have really been talking about this Idris Virgo fight. Now, all of a sudden, people would invest, were invested in it because they wanted Scott Williams to win because of that throwing water at him. Um, so, in a weird way, what he did worked. As much as I thought it was a bit corny and a bit silly and stupid, it worked. It worked, right? Um, because I'm talking about it. We're talking about it. You're talking about it. Um, but no, decent card. Uh, Sam Eziani, Alex, um, I'm going to butcher his name, Dil Mangani. Um, everyone was talking about this fight. has been a very, very good fight, and it was a very good fight. A win for Sam Eziani as well. Uh, TKO in round 12. All right. What else are we going to talk about? Um, you know, what I see, and I'd like to get your opinion on this. I, people can say, Ali, you're wrong. You're not wrong. Whatever. I don't know. Um, Tunde Ajayi said that Anthony Yard versus Joshua Boatsi is box office. So pay-per-view over here. Now, initially I was like, yeah, yeah, of course it is. But then I thought, no, it ain't. It ain't. I mean, we can't lower our standards to what a box office fight should be. And that's not a box office fight. It's not. It's not a box office fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. And it should headline a Saturday night card. Should that be a pay-per-view fight? Not for me. Not for me. I'm still waiting to see what Boatsy's going to do. Right? Um, I think Boatsy could get to a stage where he is a world-level, world-challenging title fighter. Could get to... Not there yet. Um, Anthony Yard, yes, had that cover left fight. But... Lost nearly every round, close to winning it, but lost nearly every round. And so far, we haven't seen anything from him again. Um, he's going to fight Spellman, who lost to Lyndon Arthur, who Yard was going to fight. So what I'm trying to say is that it can't be a box office fight just because we want to see them fight. I want to see them fight because I think it's a good fight. I don't know if that then makes it a box office fight. Box office fight, for me, aside from all the hype, should be two guys, world level, titles on the line, all that kind of stuff. We can't take away from what a pay we can't dilute what a pay per view fight should be, and I don't think it's a pay per view fight. Could it be a pay per view fight in a year's time if both of them are at the world level stage? Possibly, but for now, no. Like no one can tell me categorically what level they think Yard or Boatsy is right now. You, you can't, right? Or maybe some might say European level. And I'll be like, okay, get that. Should a European level fight be box office? Not for me. Just my opinion. I mean, I could count on my own opinion by Sam Gillian White versus AJ was pay-per-view, wasn't it? That at the time, um, neither guy was world level at the time. We didn't know where they were, even though AJ won a world title the next fight, but I didn't consider both of them world level. But that was pay-per-view. I was happy to pay my money for it. Is that comparable, right? Is Boatsy Yard comparable uh, to AJ Dillian White back then? Maybe. I don't know. Just ask it. I just don't think it's a pay-per-view fight. I think it's a very good fight. I just don't think it's a pay-per-view fight. Um, don't know. All right. Where are we? Uh, Wilder injured bicep in camp for Fury, says sparring partner Far. Here we go. We have more excuses, but that's not Wilder doing it, to be fair, is it? That is far saying it. Um, and it might be true. I, I always say that I don't think any boxer goes into the ring 100%. Um, I think all boxers go into the ring. Like, all boxers talk about, I am the fittest I've ever been. Um, yeah, maybe. But I don't think any boxer goes in there for 100% all guns blazing. I think they push their body to such limits that something will break. It's fact. Something will break. Something will function 
the wrong way. Don't know what I was trying to say there. But you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I think if you do push your body to the limits that these guys push their bodies to, so we're talking about pushing it to literally the, the, the absolute limit. Something's going to happen. So no boxers going in 100%. So I'm not going to give Wilder um, that one. I can't, right? I mean, even Tyson Fury was going in there with that risk of that cut eye, didn't he, that he got against Otto Wollin. So everyone, everyone had problems going into that fight. Let's just see what happens in um, the rematch. Uh, Jamal Herring, I forgot that he fought Aquendo yesterday. I haven't seen it. I did hear about the headbutts and all that kind of stuff and Aquendo getting disqualified. And now Herring, Frampton, is it going to happen? Because obviously Herring's got to heal up. I think it will happen, but Frampton's got to wait a bit longer than he would have wanted to. Um, but Frampton might take some positives from that fight. Um, he might. He might take some positives. Um, there's a huge size difference, but... I think there was a huge size difference in terms of reach and length when he fought Santa Cruz. And he was able to get under and get into the body of Santa Cruz a bit. Let's see if he can get into the inside of Jamal Herring and cause him some problems. But um, yeah, that one looks like it might be delayed for a while. Uh, what else have we got here? I saw something about Derek Chisora Usyk. Um, in for, this just, what, what's happening? Like, what's going on? Like, anyway, let's move on from it because... Um, whatever I saw, um, I'm not really going to talk about it until it's confirmed though, because I'm pretty tired about that one now. Uh, let's have a quick look at any other news whilst we're here. Um, let's have a look. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so, okay. So this Joseph Parker Jr. far fight is pretty close to being done. Um, they're trying to sell it a little bit by saying Junior Farr was, um, that was, I think they're trying to say it was Joseph Parker's last loss as an amateur. Okay. Um, look, if it's a case of they've got to do it because of quarantine rules and they're both based in New Zealand, so it's an easy fight to make because um, of that, because of that issue, then fine. But um, Joseph Parker's starting to like, fall out of my brain. When I start to think of heavyweight matchups, like decent heavyweight matchups, I'm, I'm forgetting about Joseph Parker. He needs to not be forgotten about because he's being forgotten about here. Like of all these matchups, like I don't hear Joseph Parker's name being discussed anymore and fights like Junior Farr just don't do it for me. Um, yes, Junior Farr's unbeaten, but who's he fought? Right, Joseph Parker, for me, he's still in and around that top 10. It's still in and around. And again, the fight I keep on saying to be made is Parker versus Hunter. That's such a good fight. Such a good fight. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. I don't even know if there's um, big money in that fight anymore. There was, I think, when um, Hunter was signed to match room because you could have put it on an undercard fight over here. So, for example, the Joshua versus Pulev fight. Hunter versus Parker on the undercard of that. I mean, come on, that's good, right? Um, but I don't know. Um, what else have we got here? Don't think we've got much more. What's this? Eddie Hearn, if Wilder doesn't take Fury rematch, he should retire. Why should he retire? Stop yourself, man. Why should he retire if he doesn't take the crazy? I think we've seen in the heavyweight division now, you can keep on going. We saw Povetkin, 41-year-old Povetkin, 40 at the time, 41 a few days after, beat Dillian White. Um, I don't think he should retire. I think there's a lot left in um, Deontay Wilder. I do say, though, I do say get in, get rich, get out, don't I? Um, made a lot of money from that fight. A lot of money. Um like life-changing money, right, to, 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 to do what you want to do, to do what you want to do. Um, if his head is not fully in it, so if his head's not 100% in it, then yeah, maybe, maybe. But um, if it's just a case of he wants to fight someone else before he then takes on uh, Tyson Fury, then I don't see any problem with that. Like you maybe might have been working on some stuff in the gym and you maybe want to take a, a lesser opponent, not something crazy, not someone outside the top 60, but you want to take a lesser opponent before you step in there with, right now, the best heavyweight on the planet. 
to kind of practice what you've learned, then no problem with that. Um, yeah. All right. I think we are done. Um, yeah, I think we are done. Not much else to talk about. Guys, enjoy your day. Um, I will share that news with you when I'm allowed to. But um, thank you so much for being a follower of the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, I say that like I'm disappearing. I'm not. Peace.